And good evening and welcome to Mural House Field here on the campus of Jackson Christian School. It is senior night alongside of me over here producing, directing, and doing all kinds of hard work is Summer Sturgis, and she does a great job. You'll enjoy the game shots that she brings you along with our camera crew, and of course we have some of our cameras are wireless too, so great things, but uh, welcome to Senior Night. It's an honor to recognize two student athletes from the class of 2023 for their time at Jackson Christian Baseball. First one was honored tonight was J.T. Favera. He is the son of Jason and Carrie Favera. J.T. has been a part of Jackson Christian Baseball for six years and plans to attend the Jackson State Community College. His favorite baseball memory was sweeping TCA in district play earlier this season and also his grandmother, Betsy Favera, who was a great teacher. She's retired. Uh, she supports him well, too. And the next one is a senior, Wyatt Jones, young man that plays football, he is the son of Bill and Melanie Jones. Wyatt has been part of Jackson Christian Baseball for six years. He plans to attend Mississippi State University and study kinesiology. His favorite baseball memory was beating St. George's last year in the opening round of the region tournaments. And he is a great football player. We'll tell you more about both these young men and some of the stats that you get tonight be because of um, some of his and Jackson's uh, finest working in Coach Chase McLean's class. And um, we want to thank the class of 2023's parents and the players for the impact you have had on our school and our community. We pray that God will continue to bless you and be with you throughout all of your future endeavors. And, of course, the young men got a good round of applause. The uh, We were given one time for the honoring of them, and it happened a little earlier than we were ready for because we had the old time. The coaches exchanging the lineups out there, and uh, you will have the ground rules gone over. What we're going to do is while we get ready for the broadcast, because we did not get the Sacred Heart lineup until less than five minutes ago. So um, we had their roster, but no lineup. We're going to take a time out and come back on Worthy Road Studios and Jackson Christian's Facebook page. Thompson & Smith, the area's premier independent insurance brokerage, has been serving families and businesses in the region through its founding companies since 1927. With their many insurance company partners, Thompson & Smith provides insurance products for family, home and auto, contractors, retailers, restaurants, manufacturers, medical and dental clinics as well as any other business or organization seeking quality coverage, risk management expertise and customer-focused service. Call them today to discuss your insurance needs. This could be a true story. On October 3rd, a 2003 hatchback struck and killed a deer that goes by the name Buck. I know, right? He now has Buck's head proudly displayed on his living room wall. He tells a different story. He shot it. No, he didn't. And to hide his lie, he took his car to Mitchell's body shop. No, I didn't. Yes, he did. And lucky for him, they made it look good as new. And as for Buck, the story continues. Dynamics Physical Therapy, your elite provider in sports medicine and performance. Now serving communities throughout West Tennessee. The Ball Game Blitz Sports Network by Worthy Road Studios. With over 750,000 views in 2022, we are where you need to advertise. Please subscribe to our Worthy Road Studios YouTube channel and join the other 4,000 subscribers watching local sports, including Union University, USJ, TCA, Jackson Christian, and Peabody. Our multi-camera broadcasts include slow motion instant replay, on-screen scoreboard and graphics, and professional announcers. Thanks to our sponsors who make it all possible. Ball Game Blitz Sports Network by Worthy Road Studios, the premier sports broadcast network in West Tennessee. Downtown is thriving and the Blacksmith Restaurant is leading the pack. From the rustic dining room to the unmatched patio, eating local with family is what we're about. Live local, eat local, relax local. At Arrington Funeral Directors, we accept all pre-arranged funerals. So you may have pre-arranged your funeral in this town, 
with another funeral home or even in another state. But we accept all prearranged funerals because we're here to serve families. Carlac Prestige is not your typical used car dealer. We have everything from a Porsche to a, well, to this, and this, and lots more. We inspect and repair all our vehicles. Ask us to prove it, we will. Carlock Prestige, Van Drive, Jackson. Great American Sports makes sports an addiction. Located at 125B Old Hickory Boulevard, East in Jackson, we specialize in teen sports for youth leagues, schools, and churches. We can embroider and screen print team uniforms. We also have sports equipment, Under Armour, and Adidas clothing, and anything else you need for your teen sports. You can email or call us for all your teen sports needs. Great American Sports, make sports an addiction. Home furnishings, appliances, bedding, and so much more. Kaufman's. At the Bypass and Oil Well Road in Jackson. Home furnishings for every room in your home. Custom upholstery options too, with professional advice. Major appliances from America's top name brands. Mattresses and bedding accessories. Outdoor living and grilling too. And our fully stocked warehouse helps prevent supply chain delays. Kaufman's. For your life. Do you want your smile to say it all? At Elite Dental Care, we'll make you and your family feel comfortable and secure with a variety of services and state-of-the-art care. We offer sedation dentistry that will make your time in the dental chair comfortable and relaxed. Come by and see our newly renovated and expanded office in Jackson or one of our other convenient locations in Trenton or Dyersburg. Trust your smile with Elite Dental Care and let your smile say it all. It's senior night at Mural Has Field, honoring the pitcher J.T. Favera and his battery mate. That is Wyatt Jones. Two fine seniors have had a chance to talk to these two young men. Of course, Wyatt was on the show from Hub City Deli, that one of our sponsors. The pregame show is sponsored by Great American Sports. Go by and see Ben Vargason and also Wesley and the rest of the staff. They will take care of you. And you can't do better than that. Yesterday, Austin Kelly uh, had the right stuff for Jackson Christian, allowing no runs, besting Sacred Heart by a score of 10 to nothing, a run rule game. Jackson Christian secured the victory. Thanks to nine runs in the third inning, it was a big one, too. Jackson Christian Eagles offense was led by Kelly, Easton Jones, Wyatt Jones, Daniel Green, Reed Cooper, Zach Creasy, all sending runners across the plate with RBIs in that inning. Jackson Christian, of course, put up nine runs in that inning. As we told you, the one bright spot for Sacred Heart was a double by Wilson in the first inning. Kelly got the win for the Jackson Christian Eagles. He went five innings, scattered three hits, struck out seven, and didn't walk anybody. Vance took the loss for Sacred Heart, and uh, he opened the game and went two and two-thirds inning. And so we have another district game today. Uh, we need to win. We need a little help out of Trinity Christian Academy with the Tipton Rosemark Academy team. We've still got games to play, but they're all away. This is the last regular season home contest. On the mound, J.T. Favera, he'll be going against the first baseman, Brody Wilson, who wears number nine. First pitch hit out into left field, going back, 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 and this one is going to be off the wall. So Wilson leads off with a double, much like he did yesterday. And that is a thought that you really don't want to happen. Like I said, the bright spot is the, uh, the write-up said was the double in the first inning, and here's Wilson leading off with a double again in the first inning. So a runner in scoring position, and we're, you know, we're not used to that with JT. Usually he's very settled early. This is Grant Dillon who will pitch today. He hits left-handed, wears number 23. We were not given any uh, grades that they're in or any stats, so my apologies for that. Swing and a foul pitch. 
Goes over towards the dugout. So it's a no ball, one strike count. Infield's playing at normal depth. Outfield straight away. Center fielder shading a little bit, but I think he's just trying to see around JT Favera on the mound. The pitch hit on the ground. That'll advance the runner to the sure-headed Reed Cooper over to first for the first out. Score that four to one. That's second baseman to first. And that brings up number 12, Malachi Chavis, the shortstop. Now, this young man is an athlete. He is a great basketball player, and his future probably lies, but he's a good baseball player, too. Stance middle of the box, runner at third, and the curveball's in there. So with that runner, and that's Brody Wilson down there who led off with a double. Let's see if JT can duplicate Austin's feet from yesterday. Another curveball just missing. I'm not going to criticize because we're having to broadcast from our mobile studio today. And one ball, one strike pitch. That one is outside. That one wasn't hard to tell. The other one was close enough that uh, I don't know. Roger Page is umpiring in the field. Do not know the gentleman, or at least with his mask and stuff on, can't tell who's behind the plate. Two ball, one strike pitch. This one fouled off. That'll even the count at 2-2. This is where JT really wants to bear down. He's the ace of the staff, but he and Austin both very capable pitchers. And some people might say you got two aces, and you probably do. Here's the pitch. Ground ball. It'll hold the runner coming up, and Creasy's not in there today, and the runner is safe at first. Uh, infield hit because Chavis is quicker than a hiccup, and that puts it first and third. Braden Wilbanks at third as Zach Creasy is out today. Zach is in the dugout, but uh, we'll check his status. We know that the he probably will not be able to play today. A little injury. Here's the pitch. Oh, a dandy curveball. The breaking ball, the bender, whatever you want to call it. It's all one count. Jackson Christians at double play depth. Third baseman is about two steps off the grass. Jump turn, pickoff move, keeping Chavis close. They thought they might catch him leaning. Two hits already in the inning for the Knights of Sacred Heart. Throw over again. They are really trying to keep Chavis close. Young coach Zach Wiley, non-faculty member coach, which you can have in the TWSAA play now. When I was teaching and coaching, you had to be a teacher to coach. Here's one drilled, and that one bounces, takes the high hop. One run will score, and uh, there'll be first and third again. And usually Reed gets that one, but he was down to field it properly. And the thing bounced over his shoulder. So they, they're they going to call that one an error. Interesting. We'll see what happens here. E4 runners on first and third, and you have the same situation again. And Jacob Hancock is up there. Actually, Hancock is on first he, with the air. It's John Brooks. Uh, like I said, I just had to take a snapshot of their uh, lineup on the wall to get the starting lineup. So we'll get these things straight out. This is the cleanup hitter, Jacob Hancock, wearing number 10, the center fielder. He's bunning, and it was uh, really a more of a safety-type squeeze. Third, the runner on third, not breaking. He's quick enough to score on that. Brooks, the catcher, has a two-strike count. Let's they see they should take the bunt off and probably will. Again, the infield is going to play this one at double play depth, trying to turn two. Brooks is your catcher. Number, infield, they didn't call infield fly, but in runner advances. Boy, Green gets out there. Liner to the shortstop, then pegged to first, and that gets the out. But one run, two hits, and they're calling it one error and one man left on base at the end of a half inning of play. Sacred Heart leads the Eagles one to nothing. Let's take a timeout on the Jackson Christian and Worthy Road Studios Network. Looking for a new and exciting career? 
At Jackson State Community College, we offer nationally recognized, top-rated programs designed to greenlight your career for success. With courses available in the health sciences, nursing, computer technology, and much more, your next step towards a career starts here at Jackson State. Learn how Jackson State Community College can greenlight your future at greenlightyourfuture.com. King Jewelers is not your typical run-of-the-mill jewelry store. Grover is a certified jeweler with 35 years experience. This isn't just a jewelry store. It's an iconic symbol of love. How far would you go for love? King Jewelers, 16B Conrad Drive, Jackson. Football looks fun. I bet I would have been. And we are back here for the bottom of the first. JT Mullins will lead off today, batting second, Eli Terry, batting third, Austin Kelly, who pitched that fine game yesterday. And like I said, this staff probably has two aces with JT being the senior and then hitting in the cleanup spot, Easton Jones, fifth, the senior, Wyatt Jones, the designated hitter, hits six, Carson Holt. Big first baseman Daniel Green hits in the seventh slot. And, of course, Braden Wilbanks playing in place of Zach Creasy. He uh, plays third and will hit eighth. And hitting ninth is Reed Cooper, who has – Reed has been on a tear lately, hitting quite well. And, of course, J.T. Mullins comes up there batting 314. He's your leadoff man. He scored 19 times this year. Very important to get that leadoff man on. As you saw, that's what happened on in this one to nothing contest with Sacred Heart leading. Todd Lumley coaching at first. Chase McLean at second. Brian Bullard in the dugout. He's the bench coach and what a good player he was at Freed Hardman. Of course, Lumley has experience. What a great coach he was at Peabody and now is assisting in retirement. And, of course, Chase McLean, who played here and has coached as an assistant. Two ball count. That one, the old 58-foot pitch right there. And we'll try to get a read on the softball game, which is over already, right? It was a, um, forfeit. Oh, a forfeit. And there's a pitch. It looks like outside 3-0. So the softball game, the girls get another district win, but it was a forfeit. So they they could be the number one. I think they are. We'll check that a little later. Jennifer Wheeler's there. Four pitches. J.T. Mullins walks. And that puts a runner at first. And J.T. capable of stealing some bases. He has six stolen bases this year. And that brings to the plate Eli Terry, the fine right fielder, hitting 311 on the season. Now, to show you what JT can do, he's got a 442. That one is going to get away from the catcher. We'll call it a pass ball. And the runner advances to second. Eli Terry, as we told you, 311, nine RBIs, but he scored 16 times. His on base percentage is 549. What a great job. Right handed all the way. Catcher wisely goes out and talks, and they're going to also, a lot of times you have to make sure you're on the same page with signals and stuff because the runner at second, and we've got some young men that have played a lot of baseball and know how to pick up if you don't change your signs a little bit. And uh, you get to the point where you can relay it to the plate quick enough, and somebody could be sitting on a pitch, and we'd be able to say we need a new baseball, Mr. Wilson. But right now it's a one-ball count. Sacred Heart has the lead. We're in the bottom of the first. That one gets away, and it'll be take a slide, and it's going to be close but safe. JT daring with that, just like in the old Zorro movies and TV shows. Very daring. Pass ball is what that one was scored. Here's the pitch. Ball two, three now. 
on that pitch. Six pitches. I will check that against Game Changer. He is working a little bit today. It's always fun to have seven pitches now by Dillon. And remember, there's two Dillons on the field. One is Grant, the pitcher. The other is Garrett. That one outside, so you got first and third. No outs. The man that can get on a tear and has been on a tear, the pitcher of record yesterday, Austin Kelly, the shortstop. And now the first baseman's going to walk in and have a couple of words. Brody Wilson probably has some good advice for Grant Dillon. Sacred Heart with the white hats, maroon bill, have the maroon tops, white pants. We're dapperly attired in our blue jerseys with the white pants. First and third out of the stretch. And the catcher did a good job. He was active, almost like you were going to hatch the baseball. And that's tough to find when it you do a good job and it just goes under you. But John Brooks found it. Let's see if Dylan throws over to first or comes to the plate. And that one bounces in the dirt, and the runner will advance. And I, I tell you what, admiration for number six, John Brooks. He is doing everything he possibly can to block the baseball. Runners on second and third with no outs. Austin Kelly hitting 348 up there. Austin scored 19, but he's knocked in 18, and that's an important stat. Your number three hitter has to be an all-around player. Here's one driven out into the outfield. It'll score one one way or the other. This one's going to get all the way to the fence. One run is about to cross the plate. The second run streaking for the plate. Kelly digging it with a stand-up triple and gets two RBIs. So Jackson Christian has taken the lead. Austin Kelly with two RBIs and a stand-up triple. And now... Easton Jones, who also plays a little football. You know, he's going to play a lot of football this year. Kind of tight with the back foot. It's on the stance. Hits 343. Runner third. Out of the stretch. The pitch is a strike. Easton has driven in 10 runs. He has scored 21. That's a great stat. Easton also has 18 stolen bases. He'd love to get down there to first so he could work his magic. Here's the 0-1 pitch, the curveball outside. Vance in left field. Hancock in center for the Knights. Bell in right. I believe Bell played basketball also, just like Chavis did. This one outside, two balls, one strike. A very dangerous runner at third in Austin Kelly, who will be the quarterback next year for the Eagles. Eagles football players had a little workout today. Here's the 2-1 pitch. It missed. The umpire was right. Close, but no cigar on that one. Good crowd on hand for senior night. We only have two seniors, but we're going to miss both of them. Two fine seniors. The 3-1 pitch coming to the plate. That one right down Main Street, so it's 3-2. Infield at normal depth. They're willing to give up the run for the out. Outfield straight away. Easton Jones up there. Here's one, a ground ball. It's going to get through. It's a base hit and an RBI for him. And the Eagles have taken a 3-1 lead. So Easton Jones with that RBI single. And that brings up Y. Jones, the senior catcher. Very fine young man, a scholarly. Here comes their head coach, Zach Wiley out. And, of course, White is the son of Bill and Melanie Jones. He's going to go to Mississippi State, and he's going to study kinesiology. Uh, the old ball coach here had to take kinesiology in school along with uh, a couple of semesters of anatomy and physiology. And that young man has chosen a tough path, but he can do it. And, of course, he is a legend of sort. On He's an unlicensed chiropractor on the football field. Uh, he can cross your eyeballs and rearrange your bones at the same time when he hits you. Pretty good blocking back, too. 
in football. Runner at first, no outs, 3-1 score, Jackson Christian leading. You're watching and listening to Worthy Road Studios on the Jackson Christian Facebook. Fouled off, got out just a little bit in front of it, tried to pull an outside pitch towards third base. Wyatt Jones, number 10. <coughs> Wyatt hitting 265. He has driven in 12 runs. Has a good wide stance up there, much like Joe DiMaggio used to. The pickoff move to first. And I believe that Easton was getting ready to perform his specialty. Remember, according to the stats I have, he has 18 stolen bases. He's almost to the edge of the cutout. Let's see if Dillon throws back over there again. They're going to the plate. Runner's not going. Pitch just misses outside. Infield at double play depth. Let's see if uh, Jones hasn't taken that extra step. If he gets one more step off the base at first, he'll be going. Now they jump turn, and he's back. He found out that I can still get back, and I've got a little room. Not having seen Grant Dillon, I don't know if that was his calling card or if that was his I'm going to get you move. One one pitch on the way. Just missing outside, and it may have missed more. Because, again, remember, we're on the first base side with the mobile studio. Two balls, one strike, no outs. They're going. Ball bounces, gets away. He had it stolen on the pitcher anyway, and we'll see if they give him a stolen base or if they call it a pass. Oh, actually, it won't be a pass ball. It'll be... It's three balls, one strike. The big thing is the runner is at second. They are going to call it a pass ball. I think it was a wild pitch because it hit the dirt, but I'm not the official scorer. 3-1 pitch, fouled off, 3-2. One of those little things to watch on every batter that comes up there for both teams is do they see it all the way from the pitcher's hand, and do they see it hit the bat? The great Henry Aaron and a couple other big-time hitters told me about that. Oh, they plunked him. Didn't mean to, but they got him. So hit by pitch, first and second with no outs. Carson Holt, the left-handed hitting designated hitter. And remember, that's only a, about 260 five out there to right field 20 foot fence runner coming in for white as that's a courtesy runner for the catcher that is jack collins who also doubles as a defensive back holt wanted that we got the shoulder down a little bit and was behind it a little bit so no ball one strike count Two runners on here in the top of the first. 3-1 score, Jackson Christian leading. That one fouled off, so an 0-2 count. And I believe that is the first time that Grant Dillon has been ahead in the count. And he's got a very good hitter in Carson Holt. Carson batting 275 with 18 RBIs. Checks the runners, the 0-2 pitch. Swung on, breaking ball, pull, foul. So we'll do the 0-2 pitch again. Daniel Green, the big slugging first baseman with the great reach and does such a good job in the field, will be next. Also could play a little basketball if he wanted to and plays a lot of football. The pitch just missing. No, they said he got him. Uh, he's the low signals from the old days. So Carson takes that, and usually his eyes are very good. He doesn't miss. So the umpire, though, has the best look at of anybody. One out in the inning with runners at first and second. Daniel Green comes up there. Let's see if Daniel sees it all the way. That one is low, maybe a little outside. Green has the capability, had a home run about a week ago. 
has hit the ball well. Daniel is batting 263 with 15 RBIs. He wanted to go. They're going to ring him up anyway. One ball, one strike, one out. Two runners on. We're in the bottom of the first. Good crowd here. Shadows overtaking our field right now. Lights are already on. Breaking ball. He dipped that shoulder too much, and it's going to be out of play right in front of us. If I'd had one of those nets on the extended pole, I could have reached out there and caught it like they do in the majors. So it's one ball, two strikes. One of the fans helped out. One of the young men came out of the dugout for Sacred Heart, and both teams helped with foul balls, whether you're at their park or our park. One and two pitch with these two runners on. Green wants to drive one. Doesn't want to dip that shoulder, though. There's a steal on. The pitch is outside. Oh, that was great. Now you know why Easton Jones has his 19th steal. Runners at first and third. Now can we play games? Two and two is the count. Runner on first. Let's see if Jack Collins is moving. And Jack is very capable of a stolen base. Doesn't have the big lead, but will his speed make up? Let's see if he edges off a little more. Good lead by Easton down at third in foul territory. And now Jack's running. Ball hit on the ground. It'll go back to the pitcher. And it gets away from the first baseman. One run streaking for the plate. Jack Collins looks like a comet headed towards the plate faster than a speeding bullet and scores. It makes it 5-1. So Collins running for... White Jones scores the run. Of course, Easton was home. He, he could have chewed a pack of gum, whistled Dixie, and turned a cartwheel and still made it. Looked like a good play, but it, Green was is on now with the E3. That's the first baseman, and that brings up Braden Wilbanks. Let's see who we've got. That may not be Braden. They may have brought a pinch hitter in. It is, Braden. I thought it was, but, again, we are operating from the first baseline. A little bit of an open stance, just slightly open. Runner at first. The big man can run if he wants to. He's just got to get going. That one gets away, and you're going to see Green, who doubles as an H-back and a tight end in football, can play a linebacker. So Green now on at second with one out in the inning. He's in scoring position. Outfield straight away. Second baseman will do a majority of holding Green on. Now Grant Dillon has shown that he can uh, pick people off. Got under it and fouled it off. Sometimes you, you want to drive it and you have to get that shoulder and the arc of the bat has to drive the ball, but you can get it under it too much and pop it up out of play. Know that Braden would love to have that one back. He's playing third base today. He's done that before. He can pitch a little bit too. The 2 1 pitch. Dylan checks the runner, comes to the plate. Fly ball high, but let's see if the center fielder can get under it. He does tagging. It'll be a sacrifice fly because Green is going to advance to third. So a sack fly which is F8, two outs in the inning, a runner at third. Reed Cooper, it's up to Reed. Reed comes up there hitting 274. Has 10 RBIs, but Reed has scored a ton of runs. He scored 21. So let's see, and he's gotten some tough hits hitting out of that nine slot lately. They've staked. Favera to a four-run lead, and I know Reed would love to bring in one more. The curveball looked good, and it was. Grant Dillon ahead, no ball, one strike, two outs, and a runner at third. Driven, that should be a base hit and a nice. Told you Reed has been hotter than the proverbial $2 pistol hitting lately. Gets that run home. So there's six runs in in this inning. We've done that via walks and the, with the benefit of only three hits. 
Now I have to change my scorebook around because we have batted around, and J.T. Mullins comes with two outs. He scored as he walked his first time up. J.T. is a good hitter. Remember, he hits 314, on-base percentage 442. J.T. was swinging, and I'm going to tell you what, that one looked like he almost had the fence in his eyes. So no ball, one strike count, and you've got a man that could steal a base down there at first right now. He's going ground, hit on the ground. The first baseman will take it, go 3-U-3 three, three unassisted. That's the third out. But six runs on three hits, one man left on base. There was one error, and the score at the end of one full inning of play, Jackson Christian 6, Sacred Heart 1. Let's take a timeout on the Worthy Road Studios Network. Football looks fun. I bet I would have been great at it. The first football playing deer, they would have made a movie about me and everything. Probably get Kurt Russell to play me. But alas, me and my dreams run right over again. For fast, reliable collision repair, trust the experts at Mitchell's Body Shop. And get back out there. Turn to the experts. Since 1955, Garrett Plumbing and Heating has been the leader in plumbing, heating, and air conditioning service and installation for West Tennessee. A proud supporter of USJ Bruin Athletics, we are your local carrier factory authorized dealer. Call Garrett Plumbing and Heating, 668-3339, for all of your plumbing, heating, and air needs. We are back. Betsy Favera, JT's grandmother, is here. She just spoke to us. And, of course, I am fortunate to have the young lady in the booth with me, Summer Sturgis, who is doing all this great switching, giving you great shots. Favera's first pitch, the curveball, which he's noted for, goes to Bryson Vance. And if I'm not mistaken, I believe Bryson, who plays left field in baseball, played on that very good basketball team they had at Sacred Heart. Here's another ball. This one, excuse me, swing. This one's going to be tough. But they hustled. Green covering first. Favera got over there, and JT ran a long way for that one. So one out in the inning. And that was an excuse me swing. If Vance had, he didn't really want to hit it. Coming up there, Wesley Lovelace, the second baseman. He hits right-handed. And something I'll point out to you again, Brody Wilson, who led the game off, is on a hitting tear. He hits about 490. Oh, there's a break. He's probably over 500 now. I like, not like the major league. I don't have a staff to figure averages behind me, but he's probably over 500 with that double he got in the first. Here comes the 0-1 pitch from Favera. Ground ball. Hey, laying out. Braden Wilbank shoots it across. Five to three, and I hope the fans, and they do, appreciate the effort. And when I talk about laying out like that, that means he dove, got the ball, scrambled up like Brooks Robinson used to at third base. And for you old-timers, you know who I'm talking about. Two outs in the inning, and Andre Bell, who is a very good basketball player, coming to the plate. He's got speed. I didn't get to see Sacred Heart, but one time last year – the curveball fouled right off the in kind of a I won't say a number because it doesn't really qualify as that, but off the uh, top part of the barrel of the bat. So again, Favera working ahead in the count. He'd like to dispose of this hitter and give the Eagles another chance. There's the curveball for strike two. And again, you got a senior battery. When we talk about battery, we're not talking about ever ready. That's the catcher and the pitcher. Tempting, but a good eye by Bell to lay off that pitch. One ball, two strikes, two outs, no runners on. The outfield straight away and in a little bit. But as I said, Bell makes contact and gets it in the outfield. He can run forever. Here's the pitch. 
the breaking ball struck him out. And that is the end of the top half of the second. No runs, no hits, no errors. No one left on base. To score at the end of one and one half innings of play, Jackson Christian six, Sacred Heart one. We'll be back on the Jackson Christian and Ball Game Blitz Network. The most important benefit when you buy from Jones Chevrolet at Three Way, peace of mind. Jones Chevrolet's warranty forever comes with every qualifying new and pre owned vehicle. Powertrain coverage for as long as you own your vehicle. Find out more at Jones Chevrolet in Three Way. Championship DNA. That's what you find at Jones Chevrolet at Three Way. A full line of new Chevrolets plus West Tennessee's largest used car inventory. State of the art service work and pre approved auto loans online at JonesChevroletHumboldt.com. Shop with a winner. Jones Chevrolet at Three Way. The news says Gen Z is struggling. I've got news for them. I wait tables. But last week, I built a field hospital. I put out a forest fire. I stopped a thousand attackers. And a natural disaster. I've saved lives. And led a team on patrol. I serve. While I go to school full time. While I work full time. The greater the challenge, the stronger we become. Ready for the second inning of work here, and we'll remind you, please support our advertisers who help make Worthy Road Studios TV shows and ball game blitz broadcast the high quality they are. We don't charge you like the National Federation does. Grant Dillon's first pitch inside. Of course, the hitter is Eli Terry leading off here in the bottom of the second. Eli walked his first time up and scored. Here's one hit high in the air. Don't think it's going to have the depth. Looks like Vance has got it. So one out in the inning. Fly it out to the left fielder, Vance. That brings up Austin Kelly, who had a triple his last time up. Austin was the pitcher of record and winner yesterday, 10 to nothing, scattered three hits. And when you don't walk anybody, that's a pretty good effort. Hitting over 300, probably over 350 now. I think he was at 348. We'll check that. He was. He got a triple. Picked up two RBIs on that one. Left fielder is about 10 feet or less, actually less than 10 feet from the wall. There's the curveball, and they say they like that one, they being the home plate umpire. Now I'm looking at the screen now. If, well, let's see what what the pitch does there. This one hit to right field. I'm going to give him a hit. Went off the second baseman's glove, but a good effort by their second baseman, Loveless, to try to catch it. They're going to score an error there. I'm going to see what is scored here. Uh, we'll wait for game changer. Easton Jones up there, who also had an RBI. And they're going to call that an error. Tough scoring. There's a good breaking ball to Easton. So E4, wow, that is tough. Of course, they have the right to go back, review the tape, and you can review this tape too. Another good curveball by Grant Dillon. So with one out in the inning, Austin Kelly, who is capable of stealing bases, good runner, smart runner, Here's the pitch, and it hit Jones. So we got runners in second, hit batsman. And that brings up Wyatt Jones, the senior, who was also hit by a pitch in the first inning. Jones officially 0 for 0. He's still hitting 265. That one low and away. Remember, White has 12 runs batted in. One ball, no strike pitch, two runners on, one out. Double play ball, the 
Third baseman steps on his base. And Wyatt beat it out. The old catcher and linebacker legged that one out of fielder's choice. And so he's at first. That forces Austin. That's 5U if you're scoring. That means five unassisted for the second out. Carson Holt, who struck out looking, and you know Carson would like to make up for that. They are deep in right field. Look like they're about nine feet from the fence. Holt has power, especially to right field. And he was going for the downs, but got that one off the end of the bat, the barrel. Now, aluminum bats are supposed to have a little bigger sweet spot than the old wooden bats that we use so long. Saves a lot of money having these aluminum bats. The 0-1 pitch with two outs and two runners on. Fouled off. Now, Carson Holt has to guard the plate. Green hustles, gets the ball for the umpire. Very nice gesture because that one could have been just reached for, but hustling was Daniel Green. First baseman playing behind. No reason with the runner on second to hold the first base runner on. Here's the 0-2 pitch. That one, and it got him. Carson Holt is hit. Sacks are jammed. Ducks on the pond if you prefer that. Daniel Green has a chance to make something happen. He was on with an error by the first baseman the first time up. He did score. Jackson Christian would really like to add to this 6-1 lead. Catcher tried to frame it, but the umpire didn't buy it. I didn't buy it either, but good job by the catcher. Green midway of the box. That one in the dirt, as you see. Two balls, no strikes. You don't want to give this young man anything down the middle, and if you get behind, or they call it a strike? Wow. One and one. And it can bounce over the plate and be a strike if it's in the strike zone. Here's the pitch. That one's outside. Two and one, Daniel Green looking for the pitch in his wheelhouse. As we told you, the girls won their softball game by forfeit. They were ready to play. It was senior night down there. Three balls, one strike, sacks are jammed. Daniel Green, the big man up there, Grant Dillon on the mound. He's got his sign pitching out of the stretch with the bases loaded. Walked him. So a run will score. Easton Jones comes to the plate and scores. Jack Collins running for Wyatt advances third. Carson Holt down at second. Daniel Green is on with the walk. Brings up Will Banks. He's 0 for 1. A hit here would score two, definitely. Braden saw what he liked, but... Uh, I know when he goes back and reviews this tape, he will see that he kind of pulled his head out a little bit. He saw Coach Chase McLean pretty good down there. But he, he can hit well, pitches well. There's one. It uh, looked like Dylan tried to aim the ball just a little bit, throwing that breaking ball. And remember in the last inning, he uh, Braden laid out and made a great play to keep the ball in the infield and got up. Scrambled to his feet, threw the runner out at first. Two outs in the inning. Ducks on the pond. That one's on the outside corner. Good pitch. One ball, two strikes, two outs. Bases loaded. Grant Dillon on the mound, trying to work out of a small jam here. That one bounces Again, it looks like trying to throw that pitch, and they throw it away, but that time the runner didn't see it and wouldn't have mattered. It's a good thing he wasn't going because Loveless was all over it. 
Good job of hustling out there by the young second baseman. Two balls, two strikes, two outs. Here's Dylan's pitch. It's outside, and the merry-go-round will crank it up. They throw it away so it won't crank up. This time, even with the hustle, the speedy Jack Collins has done it again. So now there, it's 3-2, and you'll have a half merry-go-round, really. Two-thirds, whatever. Runners at second and first. They will both be off with the pitch. High drama here. Here goes the runners. Boy, they got a great jump. Nubber down the line. The pitcher feels it. He'll toss it to first. This time it's complete. One to three for the third out, but two big runs were picked up. Jackson Christian leads eight to one over Sacred Heart. Going into the top of the third, let's take a timeout on the ball game blitz and the Jackson Christian Facebook Network. We offer live webcasting for families. It kind of came out of when so many warriors were going overseas to war. We have learned to offer families more choices that we want to serve our families well and serve our families better. Buying a home is a major milestone, and at the Bank of Jackson, we want to help you achieve it. Our mortgage specialists can assist you with conventional, VA, FHA, or construction loans, as well as USDA and THDA development loans. Serving the Jackson area for 25 years. The Bank of Jackson, your down-home community bank. You belong here. Member FDIC, Equal Housing Lender. We are ready for the top of the third. Sacred Heart leading off for them will be Garrett Dillon, the third baseman. Where's number 15? He'll be followed by Brody Wilson, who had that big double and scored back in the first, and Grant Dillon hitting in the two spot. Against J.T. Favera, the senior. J.T.'s first pitch, the curveball. That one was way outside and uh, because of the way that White had set up, couldn't get it, but a little help there from the on-deck batter, Brody Wilson, who is hitting probably over 500 now, came in the game at 490. There's the curveball, and yes, when you hear me talk like that, you know it's going to be a strike. One and one the count. Great shots from all over with Worthy Road Studios. There's a great one of J.T. Favera. Ground ball, and it's going to be foul now. Most of the time when they're hit at that spot, they'll go ahead and stay foul, especially down the third baseline. But JT was wise to check it out. Green was headed towards first. You see that Reed Cooper returning to his spot. Austin was on the move. Austin Kelly. In the outfield is Terry Mullins and Easton Jones. We have to distinguish between him and White. One-two count. Swinging strike three, and look at why. And he was wise to do that and show that to the umpire that he held it. So the second strikeout by J.T. Favera, who has thrown 25 pitches now, and Game Changer agrees with me. Wilson one for one. He had a big double and scored. Threw him to curveball for strike one. And let me tell you something, Brody Wilson, the first baseman, had a healthy cut. Somebody needs to be looking at this young man. Anybody's hitting over 500. Came in the game at 490. He's one for one in this contest. Just missed, and it did, but it did miss by much. That was about two millimicrons that it missed by. JT looks at the plate. He's coming to the plate with it. High pop fly. It could be a home run in a phone booth. Reed Cooper gets under it. And has, it started drifting on him a little bit. And the wind is slightly blowing out towards center. And Reed hung with it. You got to love it. 
And the guys, they, they kind of give him some good-natured ribbing. So Brody Wilson, the fine hitter, retired by a good catch, and that brings up the big left-handed hitting pitcher, Grant Dillon. He grounded out his first time up there. Up towards the front, not completely in the front, but pretty close to being in it, completely in the front. JT releases that when it goes outside. More good picture a minute ago of Daniel Green. Like to see the big first baseman. I like that. You ought to see him play football, folks. That went outside, so JT falls behind two balls, no strikes. Doesn't really want to because the left-handed hitter has a little bit better chance of hitting that breaking ball. Slightly open stance by Dillon. This is Grant Dillon. I wasn't watching the monitor, so I got the side view, but that pitch looked awfully good to me. Maybe I should go back and watch the monitor. Three balls, no strikes. First time JT's had a three-ball count, and he walks him on four. Right now has a healthy lead. Let's see if they run for Dillon. Of course, only three players on the bench right now for the Knights. Oh, yes, the curveball, the breaking ball, the bender. It was in there for strike one. Hitting now is Malachi Chavis, the fine shortstop. He had a single in the first inning, and he may have more. This one gets by the third baseman. It may roll all the way it does to the wall. One run is going to stop. Actually, I thought they would send him, but it's second and third with one out, and Chavis is two for two today. He has a Double and a single. Got a start on hitting for the cycle. Okay, Dillon at third. Chavis at second. Jacob Hancock, who is a senior, and he's hitting 413. Not a bad hitter. Wears 10, plays in center field. Jackson Christian's willing to give up a run for an out, and there's a strike. Back everywhere. Will Banks off the line about 12 or 13 feet, but four feet back from the grass, shortstop at normal depth. So is the second baseman for what he does. The bender, the breaking ball, strike two. No balls, two strikes, two runners on at second and third, one out. Favera wants the strikeout right here. This one is going to get down a seeing eye single. He just kind of. Didn't throw the bat at it, but just kind of reached out and got a piece of it. And a single by Jacob Hancock. And a run has scored. Javis advances the third, and there's still only one out in the inning. And that makes it 8-2. to two. Jackson Christian still leading Sacred Heart. John Brooks, the catcher, who grounded out to the shortstop the first time up. He's got a chance to bring a run in. Two runs, four hits, but two errors for Sacred Heart. There's one gets away, and we are late. And the run scores, and that was probably a pass ball. We'll see what the official score rules it. Chavis scores. He was quick. We're waiting for the official scorings now, 8-3. to three. 37 pitches by Favera. We're in the third. Pass ball. There's a strike, one and one. See what they call and what they come up with. Of course, at one time, Chase McLean, the head coach, was the pitching coach on a state championship team. Fouled off. John Brooks, the catcher. Up there, he wears six. Outfield straight away, runner at second. Two runs are in, and it's 8-3. Jackson Christian holding that lead, but they need outs. Fouled off, coming back 
and the screen saves us. It's all right to hit me with the baseball. Summer's too pretty for the baseball to hit. I might could have caught it. Then again, I could have made an error trying to catch it. One-two pitch. Down the line. That one was foul. It started out looking good, but you know about ifs and stuff. The ifs and buts were candy and nuts. We'd all have a Merry Christmas. I need a Merry Christmas. Here's the one-two pitch. It did miss, but, oh, it was so tempting. Two-two. Talking about Merry Christmases. I want to say hello to my pup that's listening that we got at Christmas. And uh, he has led me on a merry chase. I don't know about Merry Christmas. Still uh, doing puppy things. If he was out here, usually we have a whole slew of pups out here watching the game, and they're well-mannered. Of course, they'd love to get hold of that Wilson baseball. 2-2 the count. One out, a runner at second. Oh, the breaking ball nearly fell off the kitchen table. And I kept saying one out. There was two outs in the inning. Come on, Coach. you got to count those things right. And at the end of two and one-half innings of play, it is 8-3. Jackson Christian leading Sacred Heart. We'll take a timeout on the Ball Game Blitz Network. For anyone contemplating pre-planning, we can tell you from our experience, it's much easier to make funeral plans and record them now than wait until emotions are running at their highest. With pre-planning, you can free your mind and heart from having to make big decisions during a time of grief and instead enjoy the freedom to focus on the memories of a life well lived. Are you looking to build a career? Build a career with West Tennessee's own H&M Company. H&M is a leading coast-to-coast -coast industrial design and construction firm for Fortune 500 companies. Founded in Milan in 1957 and headquartered in Jackson, H&M is actively hiring in all areas of construction and engineering. Visit us at hmcompany.com to start building your career today. Back at Mural Haas Field, Jackson Christian leading, but tomorrow championship baseball right here. It will be the USJ Middle School Bruins against the Middle School Jackson Christian Eagles for the Northwest League Championship, and this is impressive. Jackson Christian comes in with a very good team, just three losses on the year, but they and the Bruins have had some battles. You'll see it exclusively here on Worthy Road Studios and the Jackson Christian Facebook page. And uh, you will love it. Middle school baseball. And, uh, of course, I talked to Chuck Ray earlier. Of course, Chuck does everything. He helps coach middle school baseball. He coaches football, especially middle school football. A great grill man, just like Greg Armour is. Here comes for the bottom of the third. The Eagles, and looks like Reed Cooper, who had a hit his first time up. He's one for one in the contest. Make that two for two unless this one just hangs up a long time, and it didn't. Center fielder hustled Hancock, but that one got down. And so now Reed Cooper, the fine second baseman, is two for two, and it brings the top of the order to the plate in the bottom of the third. J.T. Mullins is 0 for 1, but he scored in that first inning as he walked. J.T. left-handed hitter, and he is right up there on that chalk line. He probably the stick-out part of his shoes are on it. J.T. looks to bunt. It was outside. J.T. didn't offer at it. Now, had he pushed that bat at it, they would have called a strike. Javis will be covering down there. Don't put it past Reed Cooper for Coach McLean to give him the sign to go. But they'll give – now they're going to drive him back, and that's a good move. Remember, championship middle school baseball, Jackson Christian and USJ right here at this field tomorrow. I believe the game time is 5.30. We'll check our notes. 
Dillon's pitch, and he's going. Swinging, and that's a swinging strike. It was not a foul tip. So one ball, one strike count. No, they say it was a foul tip. They're going to make him go back. So one and one to count. Reed had it stolen, too, whether we swung or not. Then you say, well, it was a foul tip. He would have made it, but he has to come back. Low. Now, that time, the catcher, and we've got to give Brooks credit, he's trying to to frame the ball properly and get his pitcher a little advantage, and that's good strategy. The 2-1 pitch on the way. It's high and outside. Don't forget this broadcast brought to you by Mitchell's Body Shop, also our corner logo sponsors, Jackson State Community College, Dynamics Physical Therapy, Jones Chevrolet, and the Blacksmith. It was down by the Blacksmith today. What great food they've got. Here's the pitch. Driven to right field. It'll be caught. We're not tagging up. And out there, Bell gets it. And that is the first out. Jack or J.T. Mullins took it a long way, but flew out to the right fielder for the first out. Brings up Eli Terry. He's 0 for 1 with a run scored. Runner at first. Also, don't forget about Red Hook with that great seafood and Fleet Feet. Go down and get you some great shoes, especially if you're a runner. Now, this one, it wouldn't matter if he had caught it clean. The catcher, Brooks, had caught it clean. That one was stolen. Reed Cooper, two hits, a stolen base. Having a pretty fair day. He's in scoring position. And Jackson Christian would like to get back one of those two runs they lost there in the top of the third. That one a strike. Yesterday, Jackson Christian won 10 to nothing behind the three-hit pitching of Austin Kelly. And again, this is senior night. J.T. Favera and Wyatt Jones, the seniors, there's a base hit. Anyway, they're going to send him on. Left fielder comes up throwing. It's going to bend a little bit away from the cutoff man and safe at first. And Jackson Christian has added Reed Cooper's run to push it to 9-3. Eli Terry with a single. He's at first. And remember, Eli has eight stolen bases. Let's see if he's running. He scored 16 times. He also gets an RBI on that one, too. 9-5 and 1 for Jackson Christian. Nine runs, five hits, one error. Breaking ball popped up high out into right field. Bell's under it. He's got it. Makes that one-handed stab at it. So we've got two outs in the inning. That was Austin Kelly up there. Austin would have loved to have had that pitch back. Easton Jones comes up there with a chance to put something on the board. He singled in the first, walked, or got hit actually in the second. He's one for one, has an RBI. Low. Ooh, a worm killer. No, 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 the worm fall out from the baseball. I will have to disagree with the umpire. He probably had a better look. I thought that one was a little low, though. That's the problem when you wear your pants like George Hendricks used to. And they've got the runner picked off. Now the best thing can happen is you get in a rundown, and if you get past the man, you'll never get him. And they did, and he's safe. An outstanding piece of running right there by Eli Terry as nobody backed the first baseman up, and he was able to get ahead of them before they could throw the ball. Boy, that'll give you butterflies, though, if you're the runner in your stomach. It's Pepto-Bismo time here at the old ballpark. Mural has feel a lot of exciting games played here. The 0-1 pitch. Out in front of it a little bit. Hits it to Loveless, the second baseman. Over to first. Got him by a step. The inning is over. But 4-3. to three, Score that one for the third out. One run was picked up in that inning. Um, and we'll see on one hit. And the score at the end of three full innings of play, Jackson Christian 9, Sacred Heart 3. We'll be back 
on the Worthy Road Studios Ball Game Blitz Network. Ready for spring cleaning? Don't forget your HVAC system. Somebody needs to clean out all that dust and grime. And that somebody is us. Let McCoy's Heating and Air professionally clean your system so cool air can flow where it needs to go. Schedule now and you can get your cleaning for only $90. Call McCoy's Heating and Air at 731-668-7492 or visit airmccoy.com. McCoy's Heating and Air, Jackson's... The Ball Game Blitz Sports Network by Worthy Road Studios. With over 750,000 views in 2022, we are where you need to advertise. Please subscribe to our Worthy Road Studios YouTube channel and join the other 4,000 subscribers watching local sports, including Union University, USJ, TCA, Jackson Christian, and Peabody. Our multi-camera broadcasts include slow motion instant replay, on-screen scoreboard and graphics, and professional announcers. Thanks to our sponsors who make it all possible. Ball Game Blitz Sports Network by Worthy Road Studios, the premier sports broadcast network in West Tennessee. Back ready for the top of the fourth in a 9-3 contest. Reminds you of championship baseball here tomorrow. And Bryson Vance will lead it off. Vance is 0 for 1 officially. Vance, Loveless, and Bell. There's a swinging strike. So no ball, one strike count. Three runs, four hits, two errors for the Knights. And a swinging strike, two. 46 pitches, if I am correct. We'll check it against Game Changer for JT Favera. We're in the top of the fourth. And that time, Vance wanted to go for it to find left fielder. And White did wise to check it out. So it's a one ball, two strike count. Bryson Vance, the hitter, right handed hitter, right handed thrower. Curveball. Ooh. Close. It was so close, we called out the electron microscope to see if it was a strike or not. Electron microscopes are the most powerful. Here's the pitch. Number off the end of the bat. Picked up by Loveless and returned to the catcher. Two balls, two strikes, no outs. The leadoff man in the top of the fourth up there for the Knights. And that one got him as a grazer, but still hit him. And that brings up Wesley Loveless, the second baseman. He's 0 for 1. Had a really nice play earlier in the game out in the field. Has hustled and tried to back up his pitcher. Now, Vance has got the speed to steal, so JT will hold him on. Of course, JT pitches out of basically the stretch every time. Curveball, and that the curve's a good pitch to steal on. The umpire says that one's a little low. Going to sound like a basketball coach in a minute. We holler, call it on both ends. Baseball coaches say consistent, consistent. The one ball pitch, the breaking ball, that one is right in there. That pitch was more sure a strike than the Colonel Cook's Kentucky Fried Chicken. And another one. One and two. I might have come unglued if he'd called it a ball. Then my arms would have fallen off. My head come off my shoulders. One and two. Hit on the ground. A little slow for a double play. They'll get one by Kelly going to first, and they got him. Kelly's strong arm, even with the bounce, uh, got the runner at first, so we'll call it a fielder's choice. The runner advances to second, gets in scoring position. There's one out in the inning, and it brings up number 26, Andre Bell, who was a strikeout victim his first time up. He's 0 for 1, plays right field, had a couple of chances out there and done well with those. Don't forget about Carlock Nissan. I drive a Nissan Rogue myself. Actually, it's a Rogue Platinum. Great car. 
good curveball. Great cars and good curveballs. What a combo right here. Mom, apple pie in the American way. Of course, I also think they say that about Chevrolet on that thing, too, on the old ads. Here's the 0-1 pitch. Just missed getting him. Our scoreboard sponsor, Thompson and Smith, and what a great scoreboard. Look at that thing. Man, lined up perfectly. It says 9-3. to three. One ball, one strike, one out. Reading from the scoreboard. And we don't operate here. We take a picture of it. It's our camera right on that scoreboard. So one ball, two strikes. And instead of watching my scorebook and game changer a while ago, I missed an out. Good job of hitting by Bell just to hang in there because that curveball had a little zip and breaking on it. It was it was bending. So it's still one and two with that runner at second base. Andre Bell up there with Garrett Dillon on deck. sun setting and uh, we're now enveloped the field is totally with the lights on and the shade oh took a little off of that and when I say oh because that was one of those Wells Fargo pitches it got to you in gradual stages I think that's JT's fourth strikeout we'll check that in a little bit Garrett Dillon 0 for 1 coming up there 59 pitches by Favera Wants to keep that runner at second. That one is a strike right over the black edge of the plate. Plate is surrounded by a black edge all the way around. Kind of helps the umpire a little bit. The breaking ball hit up the middle. Couldn't get it. It's a base hit, and they're going to send a run to the plate. It'll be cut off. No, it got away. And now they throw the second, and they've got the runner. The run did count, though. It did score, cutting into the lead. Garrett Dillon gets a single and an RBI, and he is thrown out down at second base. And that will end the inning. One run, one hit. Nobody left on base. It's 9-4 to four at the end of three and one-half innings of play. Let's come back to the exciting baseball on the Worthy Road Studios Network after this important timeout. Downtown is thriving and the Blacksmith Restaurant is leading the pack. From the rustic dining room to the unmatched patio, eating local with family is what we're about. Live local, eat local, relax local. At Arrington Funeral Directors, we accept all prearranged funerals. So you may have prearranged your funeral in this town, with another funeral home, or even in another state. But we accept all prearranged funerals because we're here to serve families. Carlac Prestige is not your typical used car dealer. We have everything from a Porsche to a, well, to this and this, and lots more. We inspect and repair all our vehicles. Ask us to prove it, we will. Carlock Prestige, Van Drive, Jackson. Leading off here in the bottom of the fourth as I advance my scorebook is the senior Wyatt Jones. He was hit by a pitch on with a fielder's choice. Jack Collins running for him has scored twice. Wyatt up close on the right-hand side, but is back in the box a little bit. And that pitch a little bit low. Outfield's going to play him straight away. Left fielder may be a little deeper than any of the other outfielders. Second baseman really playing him not to pull the ball. And there is my good nurse practitioner who, without her, I wouldn't be on today because the magic mouthwash got my voice back. And uh, Candace Rowland, her son Blake plays on the team. Lance uh, and Blake both played football. Two balls, no strikes. Very patient hitter usually, the senior. Wyatt Jones, son of Bill and Melanie Jones, going to Mississippi State next year. He's going to be a bulldog. Take kinesiology and a strike. 3-1 count. And again, 
I don't have to tell you. We'll look at the scoreboard at all. But one time the scoreboard and I didn't agree, and I read went with it, and I was wrong. That oh okay, three two. Grant Dillon has worked his way back. Interesting call. Those of you that listen to football and basketball know what I mean when I say it's an interesting call. Here's one drilled. It's a base hit. Well, if they knocked it down, maybe they got a chance at it. No, he's safe. He is definitely safe. And I did not see what they scored it, but we'll find out here in a second. His game changer will tell us it is a single. I thought so. So the senior Wyatt Jones on first. Here comes fast Jack Collins with Carson Holt up to the plate. Carson has 18 RBIs. He'd like to get his 19th and 20th. Got under it a little more than he wanted to. It's going to be back. The center fielder will draw a beat on it. And Hancock gets it. And uh, actually, that is not Hancock out there, unless they've got two number 10s. Hancock is playing first base now. That may be Wilson out there. We'll check it out and see. Green up at the plate. He's walked and gotten on with an error. He has scored once. They drive Jack Collins back because Jack is a threat to go any time. But according to their roster, number 10 is Jacob Hancock. And I don't have my binoculars to see the number. They only have numbers. The, uh, the big ones are on the back and the little ones are on the front. Collins not going, and there's a strike to Green. Green looking for one in his wheelhouse. Green, 15 RBIs, 12 runs scored, 354 on base percentage. Collins driven back. Very concerned about Jack Collins over there who can run. Just ask some of our Memphis teams that played us. Jack took one back to the house that really was a big score. He's gone. Here's one driven into the gap. Will the center fielder get to it? No way, Jose. Jack Collins streaking like a bullet, faster than a speeding bullet. And, of course, Daniel Green more powerful than a locomotive and drives a run in. It's a double for Green and an RBI. Scoring from first on the – he was on the run anyway – was Jack Collins. And it's a 10-4 to four lead. Ten runs, seven hits, one arrow. Up to the plate, Braden Wilbanks. He's had a sacrifice. He's 0 for 1. And that pitch outside. Braden Wilbanks, the third baseman, would love to – get an RBI here. Nice gap in the right center field if he can get one there. Wanted to go for the curveball, did a good job. Oh, they said it was a strike. Hmm. Interesting again. And it could have been. I wasn't watching our fine shot from center field then, so I could be off because, remember, I see it from the first base side. Got under a little more he wanted to. First baseman gives chase. Hancock hears it hit something just as long as it doesn't hit the black rogue out there. Actually, I think it hit where they are cooking and what great hamburgers have. Championship baseball, middle school baseball for the Northwest Conference tomorrow right here at 530 on Jackson Christian's Facebook with Worthy Road Studios producing. Took a little off of the bender and struck Will Banks out. Two outs in the inning. It'll be up to Reed Cooper, who's two for two. Reed Cooper wears number five. Great number also worn by Joe DiMaggio, Johnny Bench, many other people. Those two just happen to come to mind all the time. And there's the curve. That's the slow curve version. Green would like to come home down at second base. And got a little chill. We'll have to check the. Temperature here in a minute. I'll let you be the judge. No comment. 
The only thing I can tell you, it's an 0-2 count with two outs and a runner on second. Green will be gone with the crack of the bat or the ping of the bat since it's metal. That one outside. Todd Lumley coaching at first, Chase McLean at third, both of them deep and out of where the coaches' boxes would be. You don't want to get hit by a live baseball. The one-two pitch on the ground, but Loveless is right there, scoops it up, throws to first, goes four to three. That ends the inning. There was one run on one hit and one man left on base. Score at the end of four. Jackson Christian, 10. Sacred Heart, four. Let's take a timeout on the ball game Blitz and Jackson Christian Network. Great American Sports makes sports an addiction. Located at 125B Old Hickory Boulevard, East in Jackson, we specialize in teen sports for youth leagues, schools, and churches. We can embroider and screen print team uniforms. We also have sports equipment, Under Armour, and Adidas clothing, and anything else you need for your teen sports. You can email or call us for all your teen sports needs. Great American Sports, make sports an addiction. Home furnishings, appliances, bedding, and so much more. Kaufman's. At the Bypass and Oil Well Road in Jackson. Home furnishings for every room in your home. Custom upholstery options, too, with professional advice. Major appliances from America's top name brands. Mattresses and bedding accessories. Outdoor living and grilling, too. And our fully stocked warehouse helps prevent supply chain delays. Kaufman's. For your life. We are back as Henryon, who is a sub in the game, gets a strike one call from the senior JT Favera. Claude Henryon, he is in center field now as Hancock has moved first, and Wilson, I presume, is out of the game. Nice pitch for strike two. Of course, JT Favera, the senior, we've told you a little bit about Wyatt Jones, JT's son of Jason and Kerry Favera. They're going to, he's going to go to Jackson State Community College. It's a strikeout, but it'll have to be a strikeout put out at first, an assist to Wyatt Jones. And that leads off the fifth, and I believe that is the fifth strikeout. This will bring the pitcher, Grant Dillon, up there. He's 0 for 1, walked and scored his last time up. Of course, J.T. Favera, we mentioned he's going to Jackson State. His grandfather taught out there at Jackson State, David Favera. This one popped up. Let's see who takes charge. Green has called for it. The big first baseman gets it. And there's two outs. Malachi Chavis, who's two for two, a single and a double, will be up there. Of course, his grandmother, Betsy, and this is the late David Ferrer, a good friend of mine. I hate to see that he passed away a few years ago. But Betsy is here, his grandmother, along with his parents. And uh, he says beating TCA was a Great memory. There's the curveball, a little off speed with the curveball. Javis was out in front for strike one. Two outs in the inning. Jacob Hancock on deck, who's hitting up uh, uh, close to 500. I'm about to say the wrong thing. Actually, he is at 413 right now. And a strike to him, so he should be in the hole, I need to change my game changer. One ball, two strikes. Reaches out and gets a piece of it. But that's almost an automatic out to Reed Cooper. Side retired, four to three. No runs, no hits, no errors. No one left on base. Jackson Christian leads 10 to four, and they're coming to bat on the Worthy Road Studios Network. Do you want your smile to say it all? At Elite Dental Care, we'll make you and your family feel comfortable and secure with a variety of services and state-of-the-art care. We offer sedation dentistry that will make your time in the dental chair comfortable and relaxed. Come by and see our newly renovated and expanded office in Jackson or one of our other convenient locations in Trenton or Dyersburg. Trust your smile with Elite Dental Care and let your smile say it all. 
Looking for a new and exciting career? At Jackson State Community College, we offer nationally recognized, top-rated programs designed to greenlight your career for success. With courses available in the health sciences, nursing, computer technology, and much more, your next step towards a career starts here at Jackson State. Learn how Jackson State Community College can greenlight your future at greenlightyourfuture.com. We are back here, and Dillon goes four innings, gives up seven hits, ten runs, five of them earned, three base on balls, struck out two for his total. The new pitcher is Hancock. That's Jacob Hancock, who started the contest in center field, moved to first, and it looks like that Grant is over there at first base playing there now. And they had uh, Claude Henry on in center field. But I see a different number out there, or at least it looks like it. He, uh, Henry on is in right field, so they may have moved Bell to center field. But for Jackson Christian, leading it off is number seven himself, J.T. Mullins. You thought I was going to say Mickey Mantle, didn't you? No, it's J.T. Mullins, the fine center fielder. First pitch to J.T. is low for a ball. JT came into this game hitting 314 on base percentage of 442. He's got six stolen bases, scored 19 runs, and plays a mean center field. Now, ball two. Mullins 0 for 2 in this contest, but he did score in the first inning. It's 10 4. Jackson Christian leading. Ball three. Okay, let's see if the automatic take on, is, or if you see one you like, tattoo it, but make sure it's one you really want. Three balls, no strikes. Leadoff hitter in the fifth. It bounces, and he takes off. Don't anybody pick the baseball up. He rounds it. Paul is here with the good stuff. Paul Schultz, our executive director. JT is on it first. No outs. And that brings up Eli Terry, the right fielder. Eli has driven in nine runs. He walked his first time up and scored. Eli is one for two on the day. little conference between Jacob Hancock and his catcher. Member Championship Baseball on Jackson Christian's Facebook page. USJ Middle School team against the Jackson Christian Middle School baseball team. And you see the pickoff move, kind of sly. It's a good move. Grand Dillon now over at first base. Garrett still at third. Hancock out of the stretch. And the pitch, it's outside, ball one. Eli Terry will be glad to accept a walk, but he, you know he's ready to hit. He had a single and an RBI back in the third. This one bounces, gets away, and we'll have a runner at second standing up. We are in the bottom of the fifth. Six-run lead by the Eagles. Now, if they can score four in this inning, this ball game is over by the 10-run rule, but they have to score four. Nice pitch for a strike. They scored six, they being Jackson Christian, six in the first, two in the second, one in the third, one in the fourth. So production has dropped off a little bit. Still a 10-4 score, though. And that one high, three balls, one strike, say 10-4. Sounds like you're either a law enforcement officer or you're saying 10-4, good buddy, we're here. This is the Rubber Ducky, and if you remember that song by uh, McCall. And now pickoff attempt at second. And they had JT diving back a minute ago. Jacob Hancock very deceptive there as a pitcher. 
That one looked good, and it is. Three balls, two strikes, no outs, runner at second. The hitter, Eli Terry, had a single that last time up there. He's driven in nine this year, stolen eight bases. Walked him. Runners at first and second, Austin Kelly comes to the plate. And if you'll remember, he had that big triple, two RBI triple in the first. He's one for three. He is capable of reaching the fences here. Hancock checks his runners. That one is a ball. Austin, a very patient hitter, has a good eye. Has to have a good eye in football, too, when you throw that thing. Came into a some playoff games and played well for the Eagles. Other than the championship season and the only team to hold a football championship in high school in Jackson, Tennessee, is the Jackson Christian School Eagles. It wasn't this year, but this was probably – their second or third best season since that state championship. There's the big bender, and it dropped off the table. The catcher faked, had the runner diving back in there. That's one of those good old-fashioned overhand curveball that just almost dropped straight down. Hancock checks twice on the runner. He's going to go to second, and you don't have to throw it on that one. He executed it properly. Now, if he had stepped forward, it would have been a balk, but the way he did it was proper. Here's the ball hit on the ground. It's too slow to be two. They'll try it, but now runners at first and third with one out. Kelly on with the fielder's choice. Mullins has advanced to third. Terry is out for the first out. That brings up Easton Jones. Easton had an RBI back in that first. And a nice pitch for a strike. Outfield straight away. Jones hitting 343, has 11 RBIs now. 505 on base percentage. There's the big bender, and it's a strike now in the hole. Easton Jones with a two strike count. Runners at first and third. Let's see if Kelly's going on this one. But you want to avoid a strike him out, throw him out. He's not, it's outside. One ball, two strikes. You know there's a temptation to run Kelly down it. First, hoping you can draw a throw through, but I'm sure they've got something on. Hanging tough is Easton Jones because that curveball was about to drop off the table. Paul Schultz is the man with the plan. He's got nachos. I'm going to eat tonight like a king at our great concession stand here. The one-two pitch ready to come. It's on its way. It's, the, it's high. Catcher tried to do a good job of framing it. Two balls, two strikes, a pitch. In the dirt, running Austin Kelly. He'll stand up. Now the runners are at second and third. Force play is off. And it's a 3-2 count on the tough-hitting Easton Jones. Easton also has been hit by a pitch. He scored twice in this game. Hancock will now work out of the full windup. Curveball hit up in the air. The worst we're going to get out of it is a sack fly. It's fielded by the left fielder. The runner tags and streaking home with one run is J.T. Mullins. So Mullins has scored. Jones, a sack fly to left field. It's scored F7, but he gets an RBI for that. Wyatt Jones, the senior catcher, coming up there on senior night. 
Wyatt would like nothing better. He he just wants to get on because he's a good team player, but he'd love to hit a two-run home run right here. Here's the pitch outside. Wyatt has 12 RBIs. He scored seven runs. He doesn't always get to run for himself. As a catcher, you especially with two outs, they send them to the dugout to change equipment early and let pinch runner. There's the breaking ball, and that one missed. Wyatt's on base percentage, 409. Very good. The two ball pit. No, they faked it. Don't have to throw it. The two ball pitch. That one's a strike. Good, good eye. You need to take that pitch. Doing one. Austin Kelly will be off with the crack of the bat. Second baseman, Loveless, trying to hold him on. Here's one hit up. It's going to get up in the air, though, and it's going to be short to the second baseman. And that ends the inning on the pop-up. But, again, Jackson Christian able to put one run on there. 11-4 at the end of five. Let's take a timeout on the Worthy Road Studios Network. King Jewelers is not your typical run-of-the-mill jewelry store. Grover is a certified jeweler with 35 years experience. This isn't just a jewelry store. It's an iconic symbol of love. How far would you go for love? King Jewelers 16B Conrad Drive, Jackson. Football looks fun. I bet I would have been great at it. The first football playing deer, they would have made a movie about me and everything. Probably get Kurt Russell to play me. But alas, me and my dreams run right over again. For fast, reliable collision repair, trust the experts at Mitchell's Body Shop. And get back out there. And we are back with Jacob Hancock leading it off. He's the pitcher now. He has one hit. And we are waiting for Game Changer to straighten things up. Ball about to be thrown down by the fine catcher. Senior Wyatt Jones. You've got the senior battery of J.T. Favre and Wyatt Jones playing in their last regular season home game. Hopefully we've got some playoff games tournament, maybe even a sub-state game here. Who knows? Baseball team has done so well under the direction of head coach Chase McLean, Zach Wiley, the head coach for the Knights. Just missing inside. That one didn't break as much as JT wanted him to. Outfield is in. Your center fielder way in. Just missing again the curveball. Kind of staying in. Hancock, like we said, is one for two. Or actually, I've got, let's see, I want to make sure. No, he is. They've changed it. The, the arrow that was scored earlier, this says he's two for two now. This one popped up out into right field. And a nice catch made there by Eli Terry, the right fielder. Eli, a very good outfielder, plays a little football, too. The fine catcher, John Brooks, comes up there. He's 0 for 2 today, but he has blocked a lot of baseballs in the dirt and done a good job behind the plate, and that's not an easy job, people. One out in the inning, great pitch right there. You're not going to hit that pitch. No balls, one strike. The only chance you have is a hitter take it to right field. This one popped up out in the center field. J.T. Mullins, center fielder, draws a bead. The one-handed catch, and there's two outs in the inning. Eric, leave your cables up there. 
And coming to the plate, number 22, Bryson Vance. We'll check his stats out. Favera's at 73 pitches. Make it 74 now. One ball, no strike pitch. That one low. You don't want to put the speedy Bryson Vance, the left fielder, on there. Got hit by a pitch the last time up and scored. He's 0 for 1 officially. Again, the outfield, the deepest of the outfielders, it's hard to tell, could be the left fielder. Right field way in. Two ball pitch. The breaking ball, it got it. Yeah, you look good right there. Green, Cooper, Kelly, and Will Banks, and there's another one right on it. Just caught that edge of the plate. You could say the deuces are wild. Two balls, two strikes, two outs. Usually you say it with two runners on. Favera's pitch. Head on the ground. That's going to pull Green off. Let's see if Green wins the foot race, and he does. So the big H-back tight end wins the foot race. Three U unassisted. No runs, no hits, no errors. No one left on base. Going into the bottom of the six, Jackson Christian leads 11-4 on the Ball Game Blitz Network. Turn to the experts. Since 1955, Garrett Plumbing and Heating has been the leader in plumbing, heating, and air conditioning service and installation for West Tennessee. A proud supporter of USJ Bruin Athletics, we are your local carrier factory authorized dealer. Call Garrett Plumbing and Heating, 668-3339, for all of your plumbing, heating, and air needs. The most important benefit when you buy from Jones Chevrolet at Three Way? Peace of mind. Jones Chevrolet's warranty forever comes with every qualifying new and pre owned vehicle. Powertrain coverage for as long as you own your vehicle. Find out more at Jones Chevrolet in Three Way. Championship DNA. That's what you find at Jones Chevrolet at Three Way. A full line of new Chevrolets plus West Tennessee's largest used car inventory. State of the art service work and pre approved auto loans online at JonesChevroletHumboldt.com. Shop with a winner. Jones Chevrolet at Three Way. And we are ready for the bottom of the six. The designated hitter, Carson Holt, will lead off. He's 0 for 2. He's been hit with a pitch. He scored. Well, let's see. No, he didn't score back in the first. He didn't get on, but he was hit by a pitch in the later inning. Here's one. It's a base hit, and it's a solid one. Carson, the ball gets by the first baseman, but with that foot injury, he's still healing from it. He'll take it and hold it and play it safe, and it'll be a single. Runner on first. They're going to send a pinch runner in. Great move by Chase McLean. Going to put some real speed on there. This looks like Blake Rowland, who can run like a deer, going to be an outstanding defensive back and wide out in football. Has had an outstanding JV year this year. Is that Blake? We'll, we better check it. <coughs> but it looks like him. And again, I got to get a good look at the numbers. That one in the dirt. And I, I'm going to be honest with you. I think he could have made it, but he chose. And they were playing safe because all you need is three runs, and this contest is over. It's 11 4. We're in the six. Daniel Green up there who can lose a baseball for you. An interesting call, but a strike right over that outside corner, they say. No outs in the inning. You see on the Thompson Smith scoreboard. Don't forget about Nest Realty, King Jeweler, Lonnie Cobb Ford. There's a strike, and Daniel would have liked to have had that one back. He had pulled out a little bit. Don't think he saw the ball hit the bat that time. 
One ball, two strikes. He's got to guard the plate. He's got a runner at first. Infield at double play depth. Swinging and strike three. So one out in the inning. That's going to bring Braden Wilbanks up. He's 0 for 2. Had a sacrifice, though, in the first inning. And looks like Caden is going to bat for him. That's number 26. Always check the roster. Caden Nanny is up there. Nanny, a left-handed hitter. Taste McLean getting these young men some experience, but also putting playing situational baseball. The big bender is in there for a strike. Hancock's curveball can really break down. 0-1 pitch with one out. They drive the runner back at first. And that is Blake Rowland, the sophomore. He can pitch. He can play outfield. He can run like a deer. Swinging strike two. They're going to throw through, and that one's going to get away, and Blake's going. I can tell you right now, he is going to third base. So a runner in scoring position now, especially one out. of Eric can get him home, a pass ball, a wild pitch. His mom and dad both were great athletes down at third, Blake Rowland, but uh, – of course, his mom, you may be familiar with the program she played for in basketball. It just happens to be the Waynesboro Wildcats. She played for a good friend of mine, David Bird. Here's the 0-2 pitch to Caden Nanny. Fouled off. Good job by Caden hanging in there. Caden Nanny, the batter. Caden, a very fine young man up there. Crowds that played a little bit. Hancock pitching out of the stretch. Throws the curveball high. That one didn't break, break and drop off the table like some of them. He's got a good one, though. Nanny's first plate appearance as he is pinch hitting here for Braden Wilbanks. Just missing. Now, if I'm on the night side, I'm grunting a little bit right there. Two balls, two strikes, a runner at third. Here's Hancock's pitch. It's high. They fake the throw to third. Good job by Roland looking to see. He knew the ball wasn't coming because of the way the third baseman play. Now, if you're a third baseman, what you do is you act like it's not coming. Of course, that time it wasn't. And you can fake runners out sometimes. The 3-2 pitch to Nanny. Fouled off. Now, Caden, in Caden's case, if yeah, with a great outfield shot there for a second. And uh, if he hits it down the left field line and it's fair and past the third baseman, he'll be running forever. And uh, Blake Rowland could do cartwheels to the plate. This one driven at the fine second baseman. The run will score. But the out is recorded. So Blake Rowland running scores. Nanny grounds out four to three for the second out of the inning. And Reed Cooper coming to the plate. And according to my stats, his game changer has gotten a little slow on me. Reed Cooper is two for three today, just grounding out his last time up there to Loveless, the second baseman who just handled that previous chance. That one's high. Reed would love to get on, would love to attempt to steal a base and get it and then let somebody drive him in. It's 12 to four. And the Eagles have to have 14 runs to run rule. Sacred Heart. Yesterday it was a 10 nothing game after five. Austin Kelly the winner. And we're here on Senior Night. Don't forget Championship Baseball on Jackson Christian's Facebook page. Worthy Road Studios and the Ball Game Blitz. 
bringing you all the exciting action between USJ's Middle School Baseball and Jackson Christian's Middle School Baseball. A photo finish, Jackson Christian, the regular season winner, though, in the Northwest Conference. Here's the 3-0 pitch. It's outside, and now Nanny, who has had a great night, is at first. We used to have a plant called the Kelly's Food Plant that had barbecue, Brunswick stew, all kinds of stuff like that. And I used to sing a song, Something's Cooking at the Kelly's. Well, is something cooking here with J.T. Mullins? J.T. up to bat with a chance to get one more. This is going to be a base hit. Shortstop made a great effort. Chavis did. Runners at first and second. A base hit by J.T. He scored a couple of runs tonight. His run is the all-important one. If J.T. scores in this inning, this ball game is over. There are two outs, though. Eli Terry up there to the plate. Reed Cooper second. That one high. Release point check. Hancock's release point some. I tell you to do this on pitchers of both teams sometime throughout the game. See where they're releasing the baseball. Of course, just a one ball. No strike count. Outside. Silence here at the ballpark. We don't have our parabolic mic, but it's still it's pretty silent. It's a little cooler, too. If I wasn't afraid of losing the game changer, I would go and check the temperature for you. Here's the pitch, and that one gets away, and now the force play part is going to be taken off. And the ball didn't get far enough away. I like the way the... Young man, Loveless, Wesley Loveless, hustles out there. He wants to play this game, even with his team trailing 12-4. to four. Eli Terry up to bat. Like I said, he scored once. He's had a hit he's, and an RBI. He's one for two, officially. And the sacks are jammed. And uh, I may overuse the phrase high drama sometimes, Two outs. Austin Kelly, the number three hitter in the lineup with the cleanup man next. Battle between the pitcher and the hitter here. That one gets away, and let's see. Going to have to get down and a head first slide. One of those runs that you need to end this contest just scored. There are runners at second and third. The important run is J. T. Mullins, though. He is down at third base. Can Austin get him home? Will there be an error? A wild pitch, a pass ball. 13-4. Here's the pitch. On the ground, up the middle. If he makes it to first, safe. It's will, Can they call it a hit? That is the ball game as the winning run. J.T. Mullins just crosses the plate. And Austin Kelly with the single. And the final is 14 to 4. 14 runs, 10 hits, one error, four runs, and five hits and two errors. Let's take a time out here on the ball game blitz. We'll come back with a wrap up on the Great American Sports Post Game Show. The news says Gen Z is struggling. I've got news for them. I wait tables, but last week I built a field hospital. I put out a forest fire. I stopped a thousand attackers. And a natural disaster. I've saved lives. And led a team on patrol. I serve. While I go to school full time. While I work full time. The greater the challenge, the stronger we become. We offer live webcasting for families. It kind of came out of when so many warriors were going 
overseas to war. We have learned to offer families more choices that we want to serve our families well and serve our families better. Buying a home is a major milestone, and at the Bank of Jackson, we want to help you achieve it. Our mortgage specialists can assist you with conventional, VA, FHA, or construction loans, as well as USDA and THDA development loans. Serving the Jackson area for 25 years. The Bank of Jackson, your down-home community bank. You belong here. Member FDIC, Equal Housing Lender. For anyone contemplating pre-planning, we can tell you from our experience, it's much easier to make funeral plans and record them now than wait until emotions are running at their highest. With pre-planning, you can free your mind and heart from having to make big decisions during a time of grief and instead enjoy the freedom to focus on the memories of a life well lived. Are you looking to build a career? Build a career with West Tennessee's own H&M Company. H&M is a leading coast-to-coast -coast industrial design and construction firm for Fortune 500 companies. Founded in Milan in 1957 and headquartered in Jackson, H&M is actively hiring in all areas of construction and engineering. Visit us at hmcompany.com to start building your career today. Ready for spring cleaning? Don't forget your HVAC system. Somebody needs to clean out all that dust and grime. And that somebody is us. Let McCoy's Heating and Air professionally clean your system so cool air can flow where it needs to go. Schedule now and you can get your cleaning for only $90. Call McCoy's Heating and Air at 731-668-7492 or visit airmccoy.com. McCoy's Heating and Air, Jackson's most trusted team of technicians. Downtown is thriving and the Blacksmith Restaurant is leading the pack. From the rustic dining room to the unmatched patio, eating local with family is what we're about. Live local, eat local, relax local. Tired of going to the dealerships only to see empty spaces? Then come to Carlock Nissan of Jackson. We have over 60 new vehicles in stock and more coming in daily. You can see, feel, and of course smell that new car smell. Save up to $8,600 off MSRP on a new Nissan. Plus, special APR financing as low as 1.9%. It's all at Carlock Nissan of Jackson. You should already be here. Fleet Feet, your locally owned source for the best shoes for school, work, running, and everyday comfort. They offer a 3D scan of your feet and professional fitting Fleet Feet sells the top selling brands Hoka, OnCloud, and Brooks. To add comfort to your spikes or other performance shoes, let Fleet Feet fit you for a pair of arch support inserts. Get the quality you want and the service you deserve at Fleet Feet in Jackson on Oil Well Road beside Walgreens. We're back. A happy day here at Jackson Christian on Senior Day. You always want to win for your seniors. J.T. Favera and Wyatt Jones go out winners on their last regular season home game. Hopefully we've got some tournament games here at home. Jackson Christian takes the game over Sacred Heart 14-4 after winning 10 to nothing yesterday. Run ruled them in both games. The uh, Sacred Heart, though, got things moving in the first inning and uh, scored that run, took the lead. J.T. Favera, as they used to say, bowed his back and got things busy and uh, got out of that inning. Then we'll tell you a little more about this contest in just a minute. I need to remind you of some sponsors, and please support all our sponsors. Tell them you heard about them on Jackson Christian School Athletics, and especially in this season, the baseball team. Some of the people that we need to mention, we've given you some of the other sponsors. The Tennessee National Guard, Aloha Pools, Elite Dental, McCoy's Heating and Air, I think you just saw their ad a few moments ago, Hub City Deli, Kaufman's Furniture, and Arrington Funeral Home Directors. And thank these people. Now, let's give you some totals for these young men. Outstanding contest, a scrappy Sacred Heart team, 
But for Sacred Heart, four runs, six hits, and officially now we've got the booking of three errors as the official score has uh, deemed those things so. Grant Dillon went 5.12. They actually, they are wrong about that because he had relief. And we'll, we'll get you some official stats. But let's talk about the hitting. Malachi Chavis went two for three today, as did Hancock, who played center field and actually logged some time. Jacob Hancock at first base. He wore number 10, and you can see him moved around. He went two for three. They only had six hits. So a good job there. Favera struck out five and only walked one in for Jackson Christian. Favera went six innings, gave up six hits, four runs. Three of them were earned. One base on balls, five strikeouts. JT Favera threw 79 pitches. 58 of them were strike. He faced 24 batters. Now leading hitters for Jackson Christian, Austin Kelly was Two for five, and he seems to be the only man that had two hits. He also had three RBIs. Uh, Players with hits were Mullins, Terry, Easton Jones, Wyatt Jones, Holt had a hit, Daniel Green had a hit, Will Banks did not, and then he came up and got a run in. Two for three, I forgot about Reed Cooper. What a great job Reed did. Again, the line scores on the game, 14-10, and the official score changed it to no errors for Jackson Christian. Four runs, six hits, three errors for Sacred Heart. A great victory, a district victory. And tomorrow, championship baseball right here. It'll be the middle school championship tomorrow, and you don't want to miss it. It'll be on Jackson Christian's Facebook All games of Worthy Road Studios are archived on YouTube under Worthy Road Studios, and that includes USJTCA's Peabody and also Union University. Of course, some of those teams don't participate in the baseball games, but Jackson Christian, USJ, their games and Union's games that are done by Worthy Road Studios will be here. Now, we had an outstanding crew today. This is a copyright broadcast, and their work should be protected by copyright. It is that good. The one and only Summer Sturgis directed this, produced by Paul Schulze, who is also our overall executive director. The cameras, and it's more work. There's more than one camera here, or you wouldn't have all those shots. Eric Inman, what a great job. Summer did a great job with the wireless cameras. And, of course, Coach Joe Holloway did your announcing, which is a pleasure to do Eagle Sports in general. It's a copyright broadcast. We will remind you that any rebroadcast, retransmission, or further use of this contest without the expressed written consent of Worthy Road Studios in the ball game blitz is prohibited. It is now time to utter those words. For a happy Jackson Eagle crew, thanks for your time. This time, till next time, good night all.